Welcome back to coverage of Mythic Championship 2. And ladies and gentlemen, before we go any further, please accept our sincerest, a thousand pardons, ladies and gentlemen, our sincerest apologies for all of the technical issues that we've had. We seem to be past the worst of them. The gremlins have been extricated from the wires they've been munching on. We are going to get underway. The good news for you around the world, however, is that you haven't missed a minute of modern magic as we've been holding the front table for your viewing pleasure. My name's Riley Knight, joined by Simon Gertsen. And Simon, we've got two big names of magic lined up for this round six match. Martin, Jules, I don't think needs a, an introduction. We have uh, our European Hall of Famer, part of Team Channel Fireball. He's on Tron. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's true. Uh, the, the dark side has claimed yet another name, ladies and gentlemen. It's sitting across from him, our knight in shining armor here, to bring truth and justice to the light of day, Shaheen Shirani Surani, the uh, famed control player. And Simon, well... No prizes for guessing what he's playing. No, he plays one way, um, and that's in modern blue-white control, uh, the most obvious control deck uh, you, you can choose. White-blue control and Tron has been a traditionally very lopsided matchup, Simon. Throughout the eons, Tron has effectively been able to treat this matchup as a buy. White-blue-based control decks have not had any technology to stand up. Spreading Seas was the best card they had in this matchup, but things have changed. Things have really gone done changed uh, in recent times, and, and it principally is due to the card Field of Ruin. We're going to see it play a, a key role in this matchup for Surani, because now, if anything, the matchup is lopsided in the other direction. White Blue Control, I would say, heavily favoured uh, against against the Tron Menace here. So we're going to see if Sha Shaheen Shirani, uh, Shirani can can get it done here with a search for Azcanter on turn number one. Let's see if uh, user can find that turn three Tron. Not this time. Ancient Stirrings now may uh, help him out a little bit here. So you see Khan is one of the options as well for this powerful cantrip. But uh, I got in touch with a good friend of mine, Dr. Anand Alagapan, a, uh, a rusted-on Tron player, Simon. He's been playing the decks for, don the, for, deck, the deck for donkey's years. And uh, he talked about this matchup and, and said that uh, with uh, smart use of counter spells and uh, playing around and through the Ulamog cast trigger generally renders the Tron deck unable to seal the deal. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really interesting because from a, from a high-level perspective... Um, we wouldn't look at individual cards. We would just look at the game plans mm. of both of these decks. And the big question, which of these decks has um, the upper hand if the game goes as long as you, you can imagine? And that was traditionally Tron. Mm. Mm. But I suddenly... Have exactly. Yep. I have it was huge uh, to, to get that inevitability. But here, suddenly, with those four Field of Ruins, uh, you've called Blue-White Control the best Field of Ruin deck. Although... To be honest, there isn't much competition no, that, in that I mean, space. That doesn't, that doesn't nullify the truth of the statement. <laughs> All right, it actually makes it more likely to be true. Exactly right. And we see now, oh, look at this. The one-two punch, Shaheen Surani, with a field of ruin and then a surgical extraction. Martin News, if this results, is never going to be able to assemble, assemble Tron. Look at this. He's trying to build up this castle, Sam. He's built up this massive big bastion, huge mm -hmm. big castle of seven mana. And so Shaheen Surani, in a massive big battleship, just comes and ruins it. He's there on his boat, having a great time. No, destroying. you can keep building. Oh, you yeah, just, you can keep building. It's you just, just don't get the right wall. This castle <laughs> is never going to be as impressive as my boat. That's what he's saying. That's what Shaheem Surani is saying. He's like, you can sit behind your, you know, four lands that all tap for one mana now, right? And I'm just going to be here resolving Chase to Fury, having a great time, partying with my boys out my boat. That's what's happening here. Shaheem Surani, a masterclass in exactly why this matchup, mm. Simon, has changed, I think, forever. So, Martin did already have... A relic of progenitus in play, but wasn't able to protect himself from that surgical extraction. That is usually one way um, of how you can prevent your Tron pieces to get um, to get eaten by surgical extraction. Maybe maybe Martin was a bit hasty there with uh, with the use of his artifact. Well. Let's see what the next move is here for the Czech superstar, because he is certainly playing from a massive disadvantage here. His Sanctum of Ugin. Now, this is a an important card, uh, doing a you know a sort of uh, uh, the poor man's impersonation of uh, of Eye of Ugin here, adding an extra layer of resilience and uh, and consistency to the deck. But the big thing to bear in mind here is that user is playing seven, eight, nine, ten drops in a deck that now cannot play lands that tap for more than one mana, mm -hmm. and that's that's a death sentence. Well, it's what we call playing a fair game, which is not what Tron wants to be. Doing. Not at all. However, we've seen in the past, 
if you, for example, face a Blood Moon mm. or a Damping Sphere, it is still a deck that you have to respect to some, to some extent. Those Thrag Tusks, those uh, Worm Call Engines. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, of course, also Karn and Ugin and even Ulamog become a possibility because this deck is what, over 50% mana sources. I, I, I suppose it's important to point out here as we see a Chromatic Sphere here for Martin User. It, it's important to point out that Shaheen Sarani, oddly, now has to be the proactive one. He has to dig for his Planeswalkers, he has to find some threats to put on the battlefield and in this game as fast as possible. He is playing Vendillion Click, he is playing Snapcaster Mage, no rain de main deck rest in pieces here for Surrounding. So he can put a clock on and I think that's his, that's his best bet from this point. He wants to be proactive, son. Mm. He definitely wants to um, stem the bleeding and he still doesn't want to give um, Martin infinite time to, uh, to play these threats. But this is one of, the, one of the tricky parts with blue-white control, as much as you would like to close out the game quickly, mm. if you can't find a Planeswalker and protect it, it's it's just difficult to really win uh, with those two or three power creatures, the few that you have. Now, Shaheen Surani is not a man who is afraid of, uh, of a bit of trailblazing. He isn't someone who marries himself to the beaten path, Simon. Um, when I tell you that Surani is playing one copy of Day of Judgment and one copy of Wrath of God in his main deck, would you like to guess how many copies of Supreme Verdict are in his list? Another one? Just two. Okay. So he is going for a 2-1-1 split between them, which I think is a really, really good call in the face of humans. Absolutely. Meddling Mage and uh, especially to, um, to play around that. Because you would, you would think Supreme Verdict is just mm -hmm. better than Day of Judgment and Wrath of God. But here, the diversification of the Wrath effects, I think, is a really, really good decision here from Shaheen Sarani, showing a, an in-depth knowledge of the field that he's expecting. If you, w if you were wondering how quickly Shaheen can win games or matches, mm -hmm. you can take a look at his uh, record. He's undefeated, mm. but he already managed to draw a game, and I have a feeling it probably came from the modern rounds. I wouldn't be surprised at all. That is uh, one of the difficulties of playing these slow, uh, dirtly control decks, and uh, Surani is, again, I think he needs to get aggressive. He needs to get on the front foot. He needs to start swinging the willow around, and whether it's a uh, Celestial Colonnade, whether it's a Vendillion Click, but... Uh, we're getting close to the point where user can actually start deploying some uh, of those threats. He was drawing towards a land to just start casting Worm Call Engines. Look at his hand. Worm Call Engine, Worm Call Engine. I believe I see a Karn and an Ulamog. So that is six, seven, eight. <laughs> it's a lot of business. It's a lot of business. And if user can find the lands he needs to cast them, then he's going to be in a good spot. But uh, Surani will not have too much difficulty dealing with the first Worm Coil Engine with a path to exile. Oh, no. I mean, Worm Coil Engine is not even... I don't even consider it a big threat. Okay, all right. Because you have so many Path to Exiles anyway, mm. and you, that Detention Sphere is, is another thing. But what about Karn? That is a must counter, uh, usually. What about the Ulamark trigger? You actually mentioned it very early on. Mm. How do you play around it when you have nothing on the board and your Search for a Scanta is never flipping? lands, man. Ten lands. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling it. He's just going to reach ten lands and slam that Ulamark. Simon Gertzen be cool. An SGBC. Well, how the tables have turned. How the tables have turned, my friends, watching from around the world, wherever you are. I mean, certainly, thank you for joining us here. It's been fantastic bringing you live coverage of this event so far. And, of course, the party don't stop all weekend. We've got more modern, more War of the Spark Limited coming your way. Teferi, the hero of Dominaria, going to come down. And that, that changes things yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, it's much better. Now it's basically, this is the window to draw a land into Karn. So here, user, six lands. Can he find the seventh? No, it's an Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, instead. So, Relic of Progenitus doing its uh, its best work here, but user or only able to deploy a Worm Coil Engine, which will be very easily dealt with by either Snapcaster, Ma or, sorry, Path to Exile, uh, or a uh, Detention Sphere. Mm -hmm. Path to Exile is land number seven, though. That's true. So maybe just a D Sphere here. So Sirani would be very well aware of the uh, of the risk he he runs into should he far off the path, but I think he's going to do it, Simon. But why does he do it this at this juncture? I think the best place to do it would have been in Martin's upkeep next turn. He yeah, I was, I was going to say that, but thank you for That's it. all right. I mean, you know, we've got very clearly defined roles here in the booth. You're the play-by-play. -play, I'm the expert. Yeah. The, the only reason to cast Path to Exile in your end of turn that I can see is that you don't want to have that, to invest that mana mm -hmm. later on. But with so many lands and an active Teferi, it, that can't really be a, yeah, a you, good reason. You're going to have mana to spare here. So Sarani 
I don't know, kind of playing by rote there, which isn't uh, necessarily always where you want to be. But I think we're going to see a D-Sphere here. No, what is this? For three mana, is it a V-Click? A D-Sphere? On the Relic? Wow. All right. That Relic has been a, a pain. Yeah, I a suppose thorn, so. A thorn in his side. All right, so this means this frees up that Snapcaster Mage in hand for Sarani, as well as turning on that Logic Knot a little better as well here. And I think you can see here that uh, Shaheen, uh, I assume, did the math, mm. um, that he wanted to cast Detention Sphere and have Cryptic Command mana up, which in turn meant that uh, he had to cast Path to Exile uh, immediately. So user now in a position where he can slam a 7-drop into play, but in the face of open cryptic mana, you're going to have to play very carefully here. Mm -hmm. And you do want to make your land drop, so there's always this tension of, do I actually go for the highest casting cost play in my hand, or do I maybe want to play another Wormcall engine um, and have that expedition map as an addition? What? Wow. All right. A very aggressive deployment of a, a Cryptic Command there on that Expedition map. Simon is reeling in no. a very literal sense here. Is this, is this the, the fear of Ulamok? I mean, I, maybe he's heard that you've made a big call and he's just not yeah. going to let you get he's away with like, it. He's going to keep you honest. That, that Simon is that Simon, be so wrong. He's overstepping. He's stepping into Riley's territory. He was making big calls left, right and center. I will say that I well and truly stepped into the territory of Hamish Blake, the, the inventor of the big call, but, you know, that's as may be. So Sarani now with a hand packed with interaction, mm. logic not. I do, I do like this Detention Sphere more and more, uh, the Detention Sphere play, mm -hmm. because in this matchup, Shaheen doesn't have a way to guarantee that Detention Sphere will stick around. So using it on a Karn or an Ugin uh. might look nice first, and then Ulamo comes out and suddenly you have two cards yeah, to deal with. Yeah, it could be a real liability. But dealing with the Relic temporarily is maybe just enough time to flip your Ascanta and then Teferi and Ascanta do their thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, just like we know from Standard, and, and you're going to win. That's it. Takes two to tango. And uh, Teferi has been tangoing all over Ascanta, getting his shoes nice and wet there in the Sunken Ruin. And now for four mana. Are we going to see Jace, the Mind Sculptor? Little, Still the greatest? Little, little bounce action. Still the greatest of all time? Oh, absolutely. It's clo It's getting closer, though. The yeah. yawning gulf separating Jace and, and every other Planeswalker has, has dwindled, I would say. What's the one, two, three? Jace? Jace, Jace. Oh, get out of town. Maybe Teferi? No, no. it's Jace, Lily, Teferi. It's Jace Liliana Teferi. And you're Which being, Lily? Liliana of the Vale, man. Still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's still either Lily, man. She gets it done. She gets it done. All right. Back to Martin User now. Driving towards those tan lands. Trying to make me look like a fool. Wouldn't be the first time as well. I'm a lifetime record of 0 and X against Martin User in games. I'm sure that'll surprise you, Simon. I mean, the fact that we saw Cryptic Command counter an Expedition map mm. does mean my call is less likely. I mean, you still made it. You're going to have to stand by it. I'm not letting you get away with it, Simon. You get away with too much in this line. I think that was like, how do you call that? Powers above my, you know. Oh, beyond your control? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, right. have a, I have a pass. Right. You're an insurance company pleading. It's, you know, it's, it's force majeure. Okay. Force majeure. Force yes. majeure. Yeah. All right. So user now having a good old think about what he wants to do while uh, Shaheen Surani sitting pretty now. Double Imagine Double planes walk. Imagine how different this game would have been had he drawn the land a few turns earlier. Oh, yeah. To just exile to Fairy, and Shaheen would still have had nothing facing down Relic of Progenitors and an active card. So, Sarani can pick his poison here. Plenty of counter spells in hand for him. Double logic not. Snapcaster Mage in the, uh, threatening to th flash something back. But right now, I think we're just going to logic not here. Seems like a reasonable play. And takes care of that Khan. So, back to Surani now, who again has double Planeswalkers. He's driving towards that Teferi Ultimate, mm -hmm. which is going to really curtail the, the mana development of Martin User. Once, once Teferi Ultimate, there's no avenue of victory for, for the Tron player. Anymore. All right. Well, it's getting very close here. Getting very close indeed. Supreme Verdict off the top here, thanks to uh, old mate Teferi there. And we're going to see a Fate Seal now from Jace. That's what we uh, nicknamed the plus one ability of Jace. Nice flex. From whom? From Jace. Oh, from Jace, yeah. Sure. 
I thought you were saying I was flexing by knowing what fate seal meant in, no, magic, no. in a magic context. No. no. At least I know the creature type of Dark Bound Ranger. So, Vendillion click. Here to provide a bit of a clock now. Vendillion clock on Martin User, but I think it's going to be Teferi that wraps this one up. Do you just immediately ultimate at eight, or are you going yep. for the greed no, play no, of no, the no. nine counters? I mean, that's ridiculous. You have, you have an active chase. Yeah. You're just going to just exile, exile three Four lands. cards a turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's just silliness. So Martin User here. In dire straits, it has to be said. He put on a, he put on a fight. He didn't draw um, the lands at the moment that he needed to draw them. Had he, had he been able to cast... Uh, worm Call, Worm Call, Karn, Ulamok in, in some order, I think it would have been a different story. But a walking ballista being counted means that, uh, that there is nothing for user to do to, to, to uh, contest that to ferry, and that is that. Easy game here for Shaheen Surani, proving that the white blue control matchup has turned on its head. We're going to be back with game number two, ladies and gentlemen, live here from London at the Mythic Championships 2. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this short break. All right, Frank, Amulet Titans next. I can't be alone. I don't understand this deck, hell. Uh, yeah, you are not alone, Rich. Uh, this is one of the more difficult decks to play in, uh, in all of modern. But uh, to give a quick breakdown, Amulet of Vigor untaps any permanent that enters the battlefield tapped, which is just awesome with these bounce lands. Uh, together, they uh, effectively generate two mana the turn they come down. Ancient Stirrings, meanwhile, is a big consistency boost for a deck based around, well, an artifact and lands. So the, the goal with Amulet Titan, first and foremost, is to ramp into six mana. Whether you find an early amulet or not, Azusa and Sakura Tribe Scout, in conjunction with those bounce lands, can get you there uh, quite easily. Coalition Relic, also a relatively recent addition to the stock list. Not only does it help you beat Blood Moon, but also does it get you to six mana pretty quickly. So why do I want to get six mana? Well, uh, we already saw Amulet. The other part of the deck is Titan. That stands for Primeval Titan. Uh, thanks to Summoner Spect, or even Tolaria West, which can tutor for Summoner Spect, uh, it can be found pretty consistently. So the plan is to land Primeval Titan, search for Slayer Stronghold and Boros Garrison, which will then untap thanks to the Amulet, grant haste to the Titan, uh, you then attack, Search for more lands and just either win the game right away, for example, by getting some double strike land or by just creating an unsurmountable lead. This deck looks like it's quite weak to... Uh, if you only have a few ants, a few threats, presumably there are decks I'm looking at here at... You know, n none of these cards actually do anything. <laughs> it's only when you get to here that it actually does what it wants to do. That is true. Uh, but still, thanks to uh, Summoner Spect and Tolaria West, uh, you find the Titan quite uh, consistently. And welcome back to live coverage of Mythic Championship 2 here from London in the United Kingdom. My name's Riley Knight. Got the great pleasure to be joined by Simon Gertzen. Good afternoon, Simon. Good afternoon, Riley. Great to have you along today. As we move over to one of our backup matches here, Alexander Hain. A mythic champion, winning Pro Tour, Avison Restored with his uh, legendary Miracles list, but he's on uh, a bit of a different feather this time around, Simon. Absolutely, and it is another Tron deck. Oh, I mean, Alexander is... <laughs> he's known to play really fun decks. And Tron. And, and sometimes and Tron, sometimes I guess. Tron as well, yes. And we have... Uh, Ye Chi Ching here, who is playing Dredge. This is uh, the first time we've seen Dredge in the feature match area here, although a very popular deck this weekend. And uh, it's a super weird one as well, Simon. Absolutely. The, the Dredge deck is um, just breaking a lot of the rules that you know mm. from uh, traditional magic. Oh, yeah. One of the decks, or almost all of the rules, if we're honest. I mean, like if we're talking about Birds of a Different Feather, you know, on one side we've got Alexander Hayne. This is like a, a slightly kind of weird parrot or something. It's a it's a, an overpowered, obnoxious, flashy deck. Then on the other side, like, Ye Chi Cheng's deck is just some kind of exotic finch mm -hmm. that's been smuggled into this country, and no one understands how it evolved. No one is looking at the beak. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. It's just this finch that's been... It's just like, it doesn't make any... It doesn't have any relation to, to birds that we know. The feathers, completely different. This Dredge. is the Australi Australian speaking about uh, invasive species. Yes, exactly. And, and Dredge does exactly that. It warps the ecosystem around it, Simon. Yeah, and it doesn't even need to draw cards. It doesn't want to draw cards, which should tell you that something is, is really weird. But um, as you can see here, 
uh, Ye is just drawing as much value out of his graveyard, and then what you will get is Creeping Chill Triggers, Blood Gusts coming back, Narcomibas entering the battlefield, and the big payoff, the 3-3 three, three payoff, is <laughs> Price Amalga Amalgam. <laughs> Matthew, the big payoff, a 3-3 three, three for 3. Yes, well, it is, it is very scary if the board is just exploding on turn two. And, and, and the other thing about this is just built-in resilience. Like, yeah. Dredge just keeps coming back for more. You can wrath them away, they keep coming back, you can remove them, they keep coming back. Exile-based effects at an absolute premium against Dredge, but it is resilient, it is consistent, it is effective, and it gets the job done. Alexander Hain's going to have his work cut out for him, but it looks like they're ready on table A. We're going to check back in with Hain and, uh, and yeah, if we get the chance to do so. But right now, let's head back over to Yuza and Surani. Heads up between Tron and White Blue. A handy Game 1 win for Surani, the control superstar. Let's see if he can double down and get it done in Game number 2, Simon. Field of Ruin, one of the key cards in this matchup. Uh, coming out of the board for Surani, Ceremonious reject Rejection is a great option, as indeed is Disdainful Stroke. Surani can put a bit more of a clock on his opponent with cards like Geist and Lyra, but I don't know if this is the matchup for those cards. Interesting cards, yeah. I think Lyra is too expensive. You can't tap out uh, on five against Tron. I could see Geist of St. Traft. On the other hand, we have seen that this matchup can go long and you're not losing on the spot like some other decks. Uh, for example, a Resolved Ugin is, is still beatable for Blue-White Control. Um, I, d I really like the, c the counter package. I like um, Ceremonious Rejection, especially in conjunction with Snapcaster Mage. And uh, yeah, maybe, maybe try to go for that Surgical Extraction again. If you're really concerned about all these Expedition maps and mm -hmm. uh, Relics, Stony Sounds is definitely a card I would I would uh, like to see as well. I think it's a, it's it's low key one of the one of the real uh, overperformers in this matchup because it shuts off. I mean, it does shut off O Stone, which is an Asda Planeswalkers, or whatever else. But just hamstringing their mana with Chromatic Star, Chromatic Sphere, uh, Expedition Map, uh, these other artifacts that can can do such good work. But look at this, Martin User has just gone full baddie here. He's just gone full villain mode, and he's cast a turn three Khan. But a mana leak for Sha Shaheen Surani means that. Uh, not this time, he says. Not this time. Not like this. And especially against Active Tron, you need to get uh, utility out of your mana leaks. Otherwise, there's another tower, and then uh, those cards and, and other cards just resolve. It turns into a two cost four spike, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which is no good, of course. And it's just, I mean, it, it, we are getting uh, to see Tron be destroyed here. Uh, once again, Field of Ruin being a, a key card, but seven mana out of three lands. It, that's not double, that's double plus one. Mm -hmm. you're, you're getting of an unfair advantage, and if you look at what, what's legal in modern when it comes to mana acceleration, you don't see lands that produce two or more mana. No, no, and Th I mean, the, the restriction is you can only play colorless spells, but it's not much of a restriction when you've got cards like Khan and Ugin and Ulamog. And eight uh, star or sphere effects have been printed for you to, yes. to utilize as well. Yeah, 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 Tron is remarkably consistent. It's remarkably powerful, but there are ways to disruption, and we're seeing a masterclass in uh, in doing exactly that from Shin mm -hmm. Surani. But also masterclass Martin user, what a master! What a Tron player! What a Tron player! Field of Ruin, blow up your tower. No worries, I got another one right here. I got another one right here, buddy. And we're seeing Khan Father 2.0 come down. Dr. Tron has the prognosis, and it is not looking good for Shaheen Surani, who, despite his best efforts, he tried so hard, Simon. And that's why it's not always that much fun to no. play against Tron. No. In the you, end? You did... It was ultimately consequential. It, it was ultimately inconsequential. Oh, I thought you wanted to say it didn't even matter. That would have been, that would have been more poetic, I think. Yeah, that would have had a better ring to it, for sure. Yeah, yeah. In the end, it was of no consequence. We'll workshop that, Simon. We'll, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. But for now, Khan has been liberated. The pants have come off, and he is ready to party. Khan, very truly unliberated in his uh, in his uh, sign of Urza form, because he is he's wearing uh, quite a lot of clothes for a robot for a robot golem. Mm -hmm. Unnecessary he, yeah. amount of clothes. Yeah, it's like the golems in Discworld when they start running the postal service. They they all start wearing the uniforms, or they paint themselves with the uniforms as well. Golems are, golems are weird, man. I, I can't pretend to understand the, the, the mystical workings of, 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 of golems. 
He is a massive walking ballista now. And Shaheen Sarani on three lands. He's got no answers. His hand is full of four drops. Jace the Mind Sculpt, double cryptic. Got a negate, doesn't do anything against this walking ballista here. And, and it's going to be doing a lot of walking right all over uh, Sarani's face here, Simon. And he used, he used his mana effectively in the first few turns. It was just mm. this second tower, now actually a third tower from Martin that, that kind of buried him. Now you can think about bouncing card, but it would just come back. Yep. Um, user can attack either your ha uh, cards or your lands. I think lands is probably even scarier. I would say so. I mean, Khan Liberated, once it gets going, there's just it's, it's, it is a very, very difficult card to recover from. Yep. It doesn't have... I mean, unless you're going extremely wide. I mean, tokens. Tokens are a great strategy against mm -hmm. it. When you've got ways to pressure Khan that don't sort of aren't an all like egg, egg meat basket type situation. So some some nice things but here yeah, as, no. as this game closes. We had, we had Walking Ballista um, cast with four mana to spare or even five mm -hmm. so that um, Manali couldn't touch it. Mm -hmm. um, and then that Jace was just used to brainstorm, but Karn and Walking Ballista were still around. So it was really a desperate Oh move. yeah, yeah. Martin User had it, had it covered on all angles, and that's what we see. Sometime Tron, they just nut draw you, and that is that. So, my friends, we're going to take a quick break while these guys shuffle up, get ready for game number three. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back live from London just after this. Welcome back to the feature match area here at Mythic Championship 2, live from London in the United Kingdom. My name's Riley, joined by Simon Gertzen. And Simon, we're going to check back in on a former Mythic champion, Alexander Hain, the champion of Pro Tour, Avison Restored, playing against Yushi Chan. Oh, well, no, OK, never mind, never mind. All right, well, big lead up, big, big, big lead up to that. But at the, by the time the camera got there, didn't even matter. Mm. We'll close things out there. It uh, looks like these guys have finished up. So 
It shouldn't be too much longer, my friends, before we're able to jump back over to our first table here. Martin User on Tron. Looks like he's taken a mulligan to six. And Shaheen Surani has, hap has kept his seven. And it looks like we are good to go. The players are settled, are in readiness, and can begin in their leisure. Let's begin here and see how things go. Now, obviously, Simon, it's it's uh, tight, all tied up at one apiece. We had Sarani get, to get some good work done in game number one uh, with cards like Field of Ruin. But Martin User, fantastic draw from him in game number two. Natural Tron gets it done. Mm -hmm. Martin uh, taking full, full uh, value out of the London Mulligan. Mm -hmm. Making sure to find those Tron lands. Now, Surani has brought in Geist of Saint Trap. Mm -hmm. He is looking to get on the front foot. He is looking to apply some pressure early with Martin User. I have to say, I don't hate this. I think especially Geist is a good call against a card like Khan because mm -hmm. it doesn't give them the opportunity to turn three Khan, kill your thing, and you know take over from there. It is especially good on the play. Yeah, on the draw, I'm. I'm I'm not as uh, happy about tapping out for for a Geist of Saint Traff, but here um, it does seem like something that you could go for. Now, Sarani with the dream start of Islands Plains and now a Field of Ruin, and that's going to let him uh, ruin users' hopes of getting a, a natural Tron mm -hmm. on turn number four. And I'm I'm quite sure that he's just doing that because he also has surgical extraction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, otherwise, he could have just played his Geist of St. Traft and gone for the same play next turn because there was no threat of um, Tron. However, the land that user played was a Ghost Quarter, so he had to use his Field of Ruin uh, when he could. Yes, indeed. As we see, user untapped now with Ghost Quarter and Field of Ruin. Oh, sorry, and uh, Forest in play. But there is that Surgical Extraction, Simon, shooting from the hip. And something to learn here. It's a, it's a tiny um, little play. You wait until the draw step. All right. Because that gives your opponent those three more cards, those three more Urza's Towers to draw, mm. and you snatch an additional card with uh, Surgical Out surgery of the hand. Right? If they draw. And it. it's a very small edge. It's a small edge, but it's, on the other hand, we know how much a card is worth. No, 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 no. As in, sorry, sorry, I'm saying, as in, it works a very small percentage of the exactly, time. Exactly. But, but if when it, it works, hits, you basically. Uh, took their draw step away. It's a free card. Yes, it's huge. So here we see now uh, Shaheen Surani is going to extirpate or surgically extract all of these copies of Urza's Tower and they're all mismatched. Martin User. I will be having stern words with you after the broadcast today, my friend. Don't think you've gotten away with this. I reckon he's playing 12 mismatched Tron lands. Well, if you play four different towers. I've just held this man in such high esteem for so many years and it all comes crumbling down in such a short amount of time. Martin User, you're on notice, my friend. I'm coming for you. Shaheen Surani, off to a great start with the combo, the one-two punch of Field of Ruin plus Surgical Extraction. And now Martin User playing from behind because he's going to need to tap a lot of lands to put that Ugin into play. Yeah, all, all of his cards are going to be expensive. He's on three lands. He has a Walking Ballista that is certainly not irrelevant. Now here uh, comes Geist of St. Traft. Right now, looking to just trade with the Walking Ballista, so Shaheen has to decide how aggressively he wants to deal with the artifact creature. So user can pay four mana to put a plus one, plus one counter on the Ballista, and that would, uh, again, prompt a trade. Maybe user just takes six and then grows the Ballista to a point where it can block the, the Geist profitably. That's very risky against Jay's yeah. cryptic command. I mean, you're running eight mana into one card just for that kind of... I don't know, man. I don't see it. Why don't you just trade it? I think it's... I think you're happy about that exchange. You're using your mana that turn. You're dealing. You're trading a Walking Ballista for a Geist of Saint Traft against Blue White Control. That can't be too bad. All right. Well, let's see how things shake out here. At the moment, now the action with Sarani, who is going to uh, have the option to attack and get in for six. And we'll see what user's response is here. His hand isn't looking too great. Nature's Claim Expedition Map Ugin Forest. Sarani, on the ha other hand, she's look at these club bangers. DJ Shaheen. Cutting it on the ones and twos. Double path serum visions, and here's that Teferi, freshly cast, and no attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you can you can tell that Shaheen is a control player at heart. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't understand. He's like, what is this combat step? Yeah, wh why? What is is this just a two-two blocker De with hexproof? Declare blockers. What is a blocker? No. Um, it is it is a nice play because he has those uh, path to exile. So mm -hmm. for him, this keeping the tension. 
of both of these creatures being on the battlefield is actually good for him. Oh, looks like Shaheen Sarani does well and truly understand what a blocker is because he's going to block with his guys the same trap. That prompts Martin User to pump up the uh, Walking Ballista, but walks right into a path to exile here from the American Control Master. Let's see what he wants to do with those counters. They are going to be flung to Ferry Woods. But does User want the extra land, Simon? That's the question. I think he does. Isn't isn't Lance the only thing that can help, can help him here? Yep, and that's why we see the uh, lack of an activation on that last counter. It's not going to be flung at the uh, Hero, of, Hero of Dominaria. Guys of St. Traff lives to fight another day. User goes and fetches out another forest. There are five in his list, which you would know yourself, my friends, if you were making uh, use of the Cardboard Live application. You can see it on your screen if you're watching on, uh, on a desktop or a laptop computer. If you're on mobile, just click that little application or, or touch that little... Uh, that little uh, app button there and you'll get all the glory of the Cardboard Live app. If you're not using it, you are really missing out. It's something that's very new to the Mythic Championship. We're very, very happy to be on board with the Cardboard Live people. Hunter and Wilson are here, furiously smeared in, in grease with, uh, with, with spanners sticking out of their tool belts, keeping the, uh, the cogs ticking over some. We're very lucky to have them on board. Yeah, that's how, how software works. Well, uh, Simon, out of the two of us, who is a trained software engineer? Me. That is, I didn't, didn't think that, that one needed some more time in the oven. I did not think that one through. At least that's what I call myself. At least, from, yeah, from exactly. Time to time. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your business card. And at that point, I mean, no one's really going to deny it, eh? So, Khan Liberated is picked off that uh, ancient stirrings there. Going to go to the Hannah Martin. Use one of the most powerful cantrips in the format, it has to be said. Certainly the glue that holds many of these colourless decks together, be it Hardened Scales or uh, Were Prison. And a Serum Visions now for Shaheen Sarani. Going to keep things ticking over for him as well. Draws a card, one up, up on top and one below decks. And upstairs with Teferi. So drawing a bunch of cards, there's not a gate off the top. That's a nice one. But Sarani is not really under any pressure. Or he, he, sorry, he doesn't, there's no impetus for him to put on any more pressure. No, the real pressure is to find an answer to Ugin before it can come down. Well, and I mean, the negate in hand is, is one, certainly a, a, an excellent way to deal with that problem. And then that is the one shot, effectively, that Martin has. If, if he doesn't find a global answer to these three very different threats, mm -hmm. then uh, it's just all over Red Rover. All over Red Rover, as they say in the business. So, a stacked hand here for Sarani as he picks up as well. Looks like a copy of uh, Logic Not as well. And that is Logic Not Good News for Martin User, who is looking to resolve clunky, expensive, sorcery speed threats. Here's a Khan Liberated. But it looks like he's going to go in front of the Tribunal, and his liberation will be very brief indeed. So, do you actually negate that? Um, do you logic not it, I think. Oh, okay, if you have two counters. I'm, I'm just wondering if you can just let it resolve, because is, like, it, is it all that scary? What does it do? Just eat one of your planeswalkers? You're like, I've got a spare. And a guys of St. Traft, so the, the, so the current wouldn't just survive. immediately dies, yeah. Well, Sarani's going to play it safe by the water. I mean, okay, if looking at his hand right there, is this, logic not why, and why, 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 He can just counter every, just counter every th single thing. Maybe you can play his chromatic sphere, and, and Sarani's like, nah. No, not today. Not today. Expedition map? No. No, no, no. No. Ornithopter? No. Not happening. Sorrow's Path, a land. You can't counter it. And a Field of Ruin as well, just in case things get really crazy. But I don't think anything can happen here. We're going to see an Angel get across as well with that Ghost of St. Traff clipping in for six. Kicking it like it's 2012, ladies and gentlemen. 20 does. 20 do. And it looks like Shaheen Sarani is well and truly getting it here with a ghost quarter being blown up. That's a nice little play as well because it means um, Celestial Colonnade is threatening lethal next turn. Actually, Snap Custom Mage is also threatening lethal next turn. Sor Sorani isn't drawing this match, I, I, don't, I believe. Th I don't know there's a metric upon which Shaheen Sorani isn't winning. Maybe it's cards in library. Maybe Bart Martin uses best out is to mill Shaheen Sorani out at this point because in every other conceivable metric, Shaheen Sorani is winning. Back to user now. He's got one shot, but I do think he's going to miss his chance to blow here. I'm sure he'll have many opportunities throughout his lifetime to make it up, however, as we see Chromatic Star. 
crack. Away it goes. So, can he nature's claim his own artifact to gain enough life to put him out of lethal range here, Simon? Yep. Is that, that the play? That is theoretically possible. Um, He's also got a Thrag Tusk. Thrag Tusk is good to stay alive, but unlikely to resolve. Going to go and get an Expedition map here. Finds a Ghost Quarter. Okay. So that's an answer to the Celestial Colonnade. So you're not dead on board. Jeez. For sure. User. I mean, I'd, I'd be generous in saying he's got his snoot above water. He's got one of those special nasal attachments for a snorkel, which is de the, the waves of which are desperately lapping against the edge of it. But there's a disdainful stroke, and that's enough for Shaheen Sarani to keep this one under the wraps. And he wraps it up in convincing fashion. Two to one after an unfortunate game loss in game number two. Shaheen Sarani, I mean, you've got to hand it to him. We talked about this somewhat... Quite lopsided matchup, really, between Tron and White Blue Control. And Sarani showed us exactly why it is now that the Tron player is the one with the sweats when they sit down against Celestial Colonnade. Which is quite relevant for the overall modern yeah. metagame and yeah. this tournament in particular. If I'm thinking about Is It Phoenix and we saw the proud dismantle mm. Is It Phoenix, we just saw that Blue White can beat Tron. Not easily, but it, it is it does look a lot more manageable than in I mean the past. I think I think it's favorable. It's favorable for, yeah. for Blue White, which is a huge difference to to uh, the time before Field of Ruin. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking about humans, which you can definitely beat. And Dredge is a bit more tricky. Are you playing Terminus? Are you playing Rest in Peace or not? I think Shaheen is opting to kind of lose game one against Dredge, but he has the rest of the metagame covered. All right. Well, we're going to see how things shake out for him because, of course, he's well and truly amongst the top tables. Undefeated. I believe he has a draw, yep. but still is in very good shape. And right now, of course, we've got more stuff to bring you here at Mythic Championship. We may have some Time Walk lined up here. We're getting things uh, all sorted out, and we'll see how things uh, uh, continue as we head towards the pointy end of day number one. We've got two more live rounds to bring you, of course, before we wrap things up, and tomorrow we'll be bringing more draft and more modern for a cut to top eight in the finals. No surprises there, but Simon, we have had a couple of different things throughout the weekend here. We've had uh, the London Mulligan, we've had open deck lists, and that ha that's had a, a fair bit of an impact on this tournament. Yeah, I, I think the, the London Mulligan and its impact was a little bit overstated, mm -hmm. and that's simply because it's so easy to disregard the fact that you're not planning to mulligan on top. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Except for <laughs> Ben Hull, who was just happy to go yeah, to th yeah. four. But yeah. the payoff just isn't that great. All right. Let's go on. Let's uh, let's move on now, and we'll uh, we'll see what's going on with uh, with uh, Time Walk. And, uh, because, of course, we have pre... Oh, excuse me. We've got the interview with the winner. Excuse me. A, a thousand pardons for my friends. We're going to head down to the feature match area. We've got Tim Willoughby standing by. Hey, Riley. I am here with Shaheen Sarani. And of all of the people in the room... I think there are very, very few that when it comes to open deck lists and knowing what deck you might be playing, it's not really necessary against you because you've pretty much got one speed and we've seen it in the feature match area right now, but you're loving this particular rule change, right? Absolutely. It goes from them knowing what I'm playing every time to finally the, the tables are even now. How the tables have turned. <laughs> And specifically, talk us through how that ends up working with regards to the way that mulligans work now. Because for a control deck like yours, it's a pretty big game. Right. So there was a kind of a misconception at the beginning that this uh, rules change with the mulligan and decklist would help out combo decks and decks without cantrips. And that's not the case. It's really these decks like this deck, like Blue White Control, that has all these cantrips that gains the most from it. Because when you're able to see your opponents on an aggressive deck, you get to keep those busted hands with wraths and paths and etc. But if they're on Tron or they're on combo, those hands, you lost the game before the game even started. You're already on a mulligan to four. So with open deck list, you're able to see what your opponent's on. You can keep the right half of your deck, and that is big game for control. It might actually single-handedly make uh, control uh, tier one in modern, I think. Get those make control great again hats out, because Shaheen Sarani, he's enjoying this modern format a great deal. Back to you guys in the booth. And that is just about that for this round, my friends. That is all she wrote for round number six. But of course, as I say, sorry, sorry, round number seven, we've got two more rounds coming your... Round number six. We've got two more rounds coming your way before the end of the day, so stick with us, my friends. We're going to go to a quick break, and on the other side of it, back with more Modern, live from Mythic Championship London. All right, Frank, it's a super complicated deck tech. Let's talk about Jeez. burn. I'm going to guess that these are cheap and efficient creatures and that they're red. Uh, you would be correct indeed. Ah, one for one. <laughs> yeah, Bird is just the uh, the embodiment of the philosophy of fire. 
Uh, you have lots of cheap creatures that uh, either attack for damage right away or that can deal additional damage to the opponent. How badly do we care about Goblin Guide giving our opponents lands? It doesn't really matter that much. You're trying to win the game pretty rapidly. Uh, and as long as you get in for two damage, you're more than happy to give your opponent some lands. Okay, step two, uh, Lava Spike, Lightning Bolt, Rift Bolt, Skewer the Critics. Um, I think these are going to deal three damage. Correct, and typically for one red mana. Now the dream with the deck is actually to go uh, you know, Goblin Guide on turn one, mm -hmm. turn two, double Lava Spike, turn three, triple Lightning Bolt. Uh -huh. Well, that's lethal damage right there. Yeah, it's, and that, it's, that's it's, it's simple Burton. but effective. That's Brandon Burton. That's what he did. He won. He won yep. a Grand Prix on turn Indeed. three like this. Oh. Okay, so all the three mana burn spells, and then. Yeah, well, you also have to round out the deck with some two mana burn spells. Oh, how very uh. disappointing! <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> Uh, well, eventually you just run out of one mana burn spell, so you uh, fill up with uh, some alternatives. Now, uh, but, but yeah, pretty much every card in the deck does the same thing. This means that uh, it doesn't really benefit from the London Mulligan rule, but burn does prey on all the fetch land, shock land mana bases that uh, are often seen in modern. And it's great to be here at Mythic Championship London, uh, and nice to see that Lightning Helix, Craig Jones famously <laughs> turned that card into one of the great uh, Mythic Championship moments back in 2006. So that's Burn, three to the face, three to the face, three to the face, repeat. It's affinity time here for our mini deck tech. Frank, can you contain your excitement? Uh, I, I certainly can, even though this is my favorite deck in, in modern. Um, Affinity is an artifact synergy aggro deck that is uh, named after the affinity mechanic from Mirrodin block. Uh, even though most affinity decks don't really include any actual affinity cards anymore, they still embody the idea of the mechanic, which is you just get as many cheap artifacts onto the table as quickly as possible. Well, here you have them. Quite often you've dumped your entire hand onto the table by turn three or turn four. And Mox Opal, it's just really easy to turn it on. Best card in the deck. Uh, another key element of Affinity is that you have several evasive creatures as, uh, as the cheap artifacts. By themselves, they uh, may not look like much. I mean, what's a, what's a zero power Ornithopter or a one power Voltscourge really going to accomplish, you might think. But uh, that is where all these uh, payoff cards are for. Just put a plating, uh, cranial plating on one of these flyers and suddenly you're attacking for upwards of 10 damage in the air. Uh, thanks to all that, a turn 4 kill is uh, pretty common with this deck. And you know, if you like to do combat math, especially with Arcbound Ravager, this deck is a delight. So, I, I want to ask you about this uh, Arcbound Ravager, because uh, honestly, I feel a little bit embarrassed. Because when I play against Affinity, I can't do the math. <laughs> Sometimes, it's, it is, I find it genuinely hard. Mm -hmm. What is it about Affinity that makes it so math-based and, and apparently not all that intuitive. Uh, I would say it is mainly all the sequencing decisions and Arcbound Ravager, which you can use in so many ways in combat, uh, putting the counters onto another creature by sacrificing it to its own modular ability. That is just sweet. Frank's favorite, it's Affinity. Hey everybody, welcome back to the News Desk. Maria and Rich hanging out with you. And we're here at Mythic Championship London, Rich, but we had a pretty exciting tournament not too long ago, the Mythic Invitational. Yeah, so only 64 players and double elimination meant that as soon as you lost one round, you were facing the end. So it was literally kill or be killed. And it turned out that nobody in the tournament took more scalps and sent more people out the door than our Mythic Invitational Assassin, Andre Strasky. 